a C4 here. Drinking a C4, yeah. Nice and early. Freedom mm -hmm. is 300 milligrams of caffeine. That's freedom. <laughs> yeah. These are, these are the big boys right here. Well, I got I got kind of taken a little bit because we were at HEB last night doing our family grocery shopping trip. And and HEB, they have three for six. So I was ex I was really excited. You know, you, you get the coupon there, like three for six. I could do that math. Two dollars a piece for a C4. That's, yeah. That's really good. So I load up the car. I load it up. I mean, I probably broke I, 20 C4s. Oh, Lord. Or I forget how many because I did three a piece for the for the discount, but uh, I had so many in there. But half of them were the 300 milligram ultimate energy. Oh, seasons, that aren't part of the three for six. Oh no! Oh man! Uh, it's just kind of the regular ones, the 200 milligram caffeine, you know, blue, red, the big boys. Yeah. Uh, so I paid a little extra. I don't think. I mean, I did get a lot of the regular ones, too, the 200 milligrams. So I, I got the deal on probably half of my of my purchase. But, uh, but yeah, that was my C4 adventure last night. <laughs> that's all right. Hey, that's how it goes, you know. That's sometimes you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, it was 50-50. How are you? You're drinking a big ice-cold white monster. You're going old school, Brian Eich. They're good. Yeah. They're good. I uh, I I, I like them. I always I always have. Mm hmm. And so um, yeah. It's I'm doing good. It's it's Mon It's Monday. It's sat it's Saturday. It's feeling early. feeling good. Mm. My my body's a little like. Eh. But, yeah yeah. We trained hard, and we'll we'll talk all about that around seven fifteen ish for the upcoming weightlifting talk. So we got we got double whammy podcast this morning. That's right. Double whammy. Yeah, hey, Torres, good morning on the chat board. Let's go, baby. Brian Knight's on the chat board. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. Last thing, I got to say, because it's on my mind, but back in the day, see, energy drinks weren't a big thing back in the day. When nope. me and Jeff were coming up in the sport of weightlifting, we drank the Black Monsters. Mm. 5,000 milligram sugar monsters. Yeah, I was going to say the green with the green... Yeah, letters and stuff. I never um, did like those. They were so bad, but we just drank. I mean, it was it was either that or like a Red Bull for like nineteen dollars. Yeah, I know, expensive. You know, they're spendy, and uh, you know, we were so broke coming out. We just we we'd split one. Mm. We'd have enough money to buy a monster. I remember it just being such a great day because a lot of times we couldn't buy a monster for training because we were so broke. Wow. And, um. Yeah, kids these days. Maybe that's one of the weightlifting talk podcasts. <laughs> and I remember we'd share it like it was the zombie apocalypse and it was our last loaf of bread. You know. So just sipping just sipping on it for hours. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Monster on that. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday on our cover to cover podcast here with my I'm John North. This is Brian Knight. We Welcome. Have, we have Yahweh, uh, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus with us as well, the Trinity. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Torres is here that makes six. And I'm sure that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are listening up in heaven as well. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, King David just jumped on. Ezra, Ruth, Luke, Mark. Everyone's jumping on right now. Mother Mary. Good morning, Mother Mary. Come on, baby. Even Saul just jumped on. Even Saul. <laughs> <laughs> Good old hey, he was tall, tall head and shoulders above his fellows. Tall and handsome. Tall and handsome. So uh Luke eleven, ESV. Yeah. Grab your Bibles, open them up. Uh, yeah. Israel countdown slash field trip. One hundred and forty one days. Jeez, Brian, I don't know if we're gonna make that. <laughs> we're in Luke eleven. I know. We'll, we'll give it up. We have Luke, John, Acts, Romans. You know what? I titled the show Luke 11, but we are not finished with 10. No, not, I thought we were in the uh, middle of 11. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. Maybe you're right. Well, 10 was the saving 
the, the prayer that Jesus told us to say. Yeah, I think we're still on 11. Or no. No, no, no. 11 is the prayer. You're right. I'm sorry. I titled the show 12. Oh, 12. For all those listening like a year from now on the recorded version, I do apologize. We are still on 11. Verse. Jeez, Brian. Uh, 20, yeah, we're on 24. Verse 24. So turn the page back. No, no, you're good. It yeah. said right here, Luke 11. Oh, I, I typed in 11. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. It's early. Yeah, you have you have Luke 11 and then Luke 11. So two shows that are called Luke 11. Two two studies. You're right. Perfect. Yep. Find that. This is just part two. Uh, you want to pray it in? Yeah, I will. Perfect. Oh, Father, we just come before you today, and uh, thank you for being with us always. And in the name of Jesus, we ask that uh, we ask for you. You just give us wisdom. You just give us understanding. And uh, you're so gracious to us. You're so merciful. You love us, and we love you. Thank you for sending Jesus. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross and loving us. Even when we were dead in our sins, even when we were just like, you know, spitting at you and not knowing the truth, you were still with us. You hung in there and you said, I forgive you, even though you don't know what you're doing. Mm. It's amazing. Yes. Wow. Uh, Holy Spirit, thank you for, um, for guiding us and teaching us and anointing us. We love you. We love you. What a day. What an, what an hour we live in where the world is, is wild and going crazy, but we're st stuck on the word, loving you. And um, thank you for giving us this prayer and this example in the word of God. You're so gracious. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer, Brian. Right. Yeah, thanks, man. Let's do it. I love it. All right, you want me to kick it off at 24? Yeah, start it off. All right, Luke 11, 24, ESV, here we go. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, excuse me, sorry, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and finding none, it says. I'm so when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept mm. and put in order. Then it goes out, goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Yeah. Okay. Can I just say something really quick? Come on now. This is a giant nugget. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times I've heard Christians say, okay? And and I could be wrong with this still. I want to get your opinion, Brian. I don't believe in haunted houses, but I do, of course, believe in demons. I mean, obviously. Who doesn't? I mean, if you're a Christian, you have to believe in demons. It's the Bible. But they, that's a big term I've heard a lot. A big saying. Well, haunted house. Look at this. Look at this right here. Yeah. Quote, I will return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself. Yeah. So what you what are you thinking? All right, Brian, you take the mic. Hey, no, no, yeah. Well, you're you're the quarterback, baby. I'm just So, I think this is pretty 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 straightforward talking about um someone having a, a, a demonic spirit, an unclean spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? The same thing. And it gets cast out of them. Mm. Cuz remember Jesus was just talking on a few scriptures above about being uh, casting out demons right of the people 
right? And so remember they're like, uh, oh, you cast it, you cast the devils out by the spirit of Beelzebub. And mm-hmm. he's like, what are you talking about? You, y'all, y'all are ridiculous. Satan doesn't cast out his own kind. Yeah. A house divided against itself doesn't stand, can't stand. So then he says this, right? An unclean spirit has gone out of the, out of a person. It passes through waterless places. So then at the end here, he has the, the, the he's talking about the house and I, the person's body is the house, you know? Yeah. Okay. And, and then, um, and then, so what, what, what he's saying is basically this, a person, John, who has an unclean spirit, Jesus or us, the power of God casts the, 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 this demonic entity, this unclean spirit out of a person and their house is clean. Well, if they don't fill it with the Holy spirit, if they don't fill it with the word of God, Oh. If they don't, uh, you know, begin to, to uh, cultivate a life with God, what happens is this unclean spirit, and it's in the unseen realm, right? Most people don't even think about the unseen realm. You just said that. They don't believe in haunted houses, blah, blah, blah. But truly, I've seen it myself. Some people, if they don't fill it with the word of God, they don't fill their life with Jesus, the demon comes back, and it has other demons with it. It'll attack you. Well, it's interesting. You and not that. even attack you. Yeah. To take correct. over. Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. But. Well, look at that. If your house is clean, yeah, good thing, they're going to come even harder. And we always talk about that, too. When you're walking with Jesus, they're going to attack. Sure. The enemy is going to attack even harder. When you're doing the good thing, when you're walking the narrow path. Yeah. And that's why Jesus says over and over and over, life will be hard for you. Being a Christian is going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. Yes, you're going to have blessings like Solomon. Yes, you're going to have yeah. blessings like Sarah. Yeah. Of course, you you will cross the Jordan like Moses. Yeah. But guess what? It's still going to be hard. It's true. Yeah. Exactly. Not only are, are, are you going to have the enemy out there like like this, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, even even if you fill it, you fill the house, right? He's still coming back. He, they're still going to try to get you. Wow. They're still going to try to uh, you know, you know, torment you. You have, that's why you have that's why he says over and over again, you know, you have to know who you are. We're going to read this more and more, but you have to know who you are in Christ. The wow. term in Christ is a term we haven't learned yet. Good morning, Steph. Stephanie, good morning. How's your new job going? Update us on the chat board if you can. Yeah. Or text us or call us later. We'd love to hear about it. Amen. Amen. But like right here, this is a 143 times in the in the New Testament. Not yet. This the, we're in the Gospels, right? Right. 143 times, it's written, "We are in Christ." Wow. And so, if we don't know that, then what happens? The unclean spirit comes back with seven of his buddies. Yeah, seven buddies. That yeah. Is, and even is, yeah, I had Peaky Blinders crew. Now here's another thing. If even if you see some people don't get born again, even though they get a demon cast out of them, they get their life set free by someone praying for them. They go to church. You know, God does miracles for the unsaved. Right. He does it. He does it for us too. Mm -hmm. But if they don't run to Jesus, they can be seven times worse off, tormented seven times more. And and look, and even for us, like you said. The enemy will come back and try to demonize you, try to oppress you, and bring back a whole crew, right? A it whole. Just, you think too? I mean, this is a this is one of the hardest rugby groups ever. The se- uh, the the se- sevens. It's where you you play def- defense, offense. Mm. And look, if you think about it like that, oh. those are seven hardcore demons who hate you. And if you don't run them off. In the name of Jesus, if you don't have a crew that helps you learn about this, mm-hmm. why do you think people live under a curse all their life? Oh my God! They talk that you know. You see people's lives that's just one bad thing after another. See it, you see it, yeah. 
you know, and look, and if, and if, if you don't stand up to those things, if you don't have men in your life or women in your life for all you ladies Mm -hmm. who can stand up to those enemies, they will try to pick you apart for years and years and years. And so this is just showing you that it doesn't always work exactly like this every time. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four. But Jesus has given his example that there is an unseen realm, John. He literally says it right here in red ink in the Bible. Haunted houses are real, right? Because what's the Jesus, Greek on this, what's that? What's the Greek on this one? Yeah, let's look. Yeah, let's let's break down the Greek on this. Yeah, again, you know, Taurus is on here. It just reminds me, if you're listening right now, walk the narrow path, keep your sword sharp. Oh yeah. No, it's just a reminder of that every single day as we continue on this journey. Yeah, uh, this, you know, as a believer, John, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. But if you're ignorant about well, this stuff, unknown. Yeah, yeah. And I was actually just going to say that, Brian, is that, you know, if you're out there going, well, like, geez, you know, bad things are still going to happen. If, but it's the peace that you have within you when bad things happen. Yeah. See, yeah. that's the key. So, like, I've had a lot of – I've had a tough year in 2023 but i'm happy i've been through some mental health yeah. issues but I'm, I'm at the same time i'm still happy i have peace amen I've had a lot of rocks at me a lot of obstacles in life with my daughter's eye etc but i'm happy and i have peace so i can push through the tough times as i dance for the lord with all there, my might like there my, you go like king david i can praise the lord in the storm Okay, and I think that's the key. Back in the day, before I was a Christian, before I laid my sword down to the great I am, the burning bush, the dove, and the lamb. Mm -hmm. If hard times came, I drank. Uh If hard times came, I popped prescription pills. Yep. If hard times came, I went out partying. I buried my pain. You know. Yeah. I became restless. I became angry. I dealt with it in a negative way, turning to substance abuse, turning to materialistic things, like spending all my seminar money on things to make me feel better. Yeah. Blowing through my cash like MC Hammer. I'd be like, oh, this will make me feel better. I'll just go buy a new car. Yeah. You know, and that is what leads to destruction. Nowadays, I have Christ. Yeah, look, you know, you, you weren't alone in that life. You know, people do that still right now. You know, they're, they're running not to Jesus, but to stuff. And look, you found the answer, the real one. You found real peace, real joy. And that's praise the Lord, John. That praise the Lord, even through storms. Look, Jesus said there's going to be storms. Remember, he was with the disciples and there was a storm happening on the sea. Wow. With Jesus. With Jesus. I think that you're like, oh, I'm with Jesus. Everything's going to be perfect. Nope. There's a storm. Yeah. Remember, they were out in the wilderness. He would, you know, there's five, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and they were hungry. They didn't have anything. What happened? God came through. What happened on the boat? God came through. But you have to, you have to reach out to Him. You know, I was telling you last night, right? I was like, man, remember this? I read this, and I was talking to Jen. I was like, the burning bush was out there burning. The whole, yeah. the Yahweh was in the, in the, the, in the mountain, but Moses had to stop, turn and say, oh, I want to go see this. Is that, that's God. I need to go up there. That's, God that's... wasn't booming out there saying, come this way, Moses. No. You yeah. had to go get it, baby. And hey, Genesis zero, zero, when you walk up, you park in the parking lot and you grab your hiking bag. Yeah, but. And you walk up, you're in Genesis 00, and then all of a sudden you walk up to the beginning of the trail. That's right. Big sign. Start here. Start here. An old mossy sign. It says Genesis 1 1. Guess who's there? (laughs) Jesus. He sure is. And he reaches his hand out, but you have to walk up, grab his hand, and say, Okay, Jesus, I'm ready to walk this journey. Yeah, we're talking backpacking in on on his back. He's got the the Merrill shoes on, he's got a little rain cap on, ready to go no matter what's happening. Look. He's got the North Star face jacket on. Get it? North Star. Yeah. And yeah. 
North Star. Look, if it, if it gets dark, he's there. If it's it's cold, he's there. It's raining, he's there. Lightning, he's there. If and guess what? If it's sunny, he's still there. Mm. And it will be. It'll be sunny. But the enemy comes to steal. John chapter ten, verse ten. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life. Mm. That we might have life more abundantly. So, but the Hebrew here or the Greek is the same. As it says, um, it's pretty close. When the spirit, when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places, so it wanders in the earth, seeking rest but not finding any. And it says, "I will return to my house." Wow! So it claims it, that it's their house. I will return to my house. Interesting. It does say house, and it's interesting that. Yes, I agree. We are the house, of course. But I mean, it does say house. We're talking demons and house. Yeah, but yeah. Anybody out there like, oh, I don't believe in uh, haunted houses. Well, yeah. have you read Luke chapter eleven? <laughs> I mean, Jesus believed in them. He cast them out. He talked about it exactly. Uh, now, question: When we say break down the Greek, yeah. But Jesus spoke Hebrew, and a little Aramaic, of course. But of course, he mostly. Yeah, he did. Hebrew, right? Yeah, he spoke Hebrew, but... So should uh, it break down the Hebrew even in the New Testament? No. No. Because the Bible wasn't written in Hebrew, the, the New Testament. Okay. He he didn't speak it all the time, I'm sure. Aramaic is what he they spoke in the street. And like when he's sitting here teaching people, okay. he's speaking Aramaic. Ah, uh, okay. When okay. he's in the temple and he's talking to the Pharisees, He's speaking, he's reading in, Greek, in Hebrew. Well, wait, Brian, I'm confused. I okay. thought sure. he had blonde hair, blue eyes, and he spoke English from California. Yeah, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. A lot of cool studies on three sentences, but these this is a big little paragraph here. <laughs> yeah, I, get, I, hit the, I hit the pipe, and I go, yeah, yeah. Remember that guy? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's a great video. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. obviously people know what I'm referring to. And mm -hmm. Society has. Yeah, I'll say it. The Catholic Church they have, they painted Jesus some white surfer Jesus. Look, I mean, he might have had blue eyes, but he was darker skinned. He he had longer hair. There's dark hair. It was, you know, and no, he wasn't a surfer Jesus. Now he might have surfed. Look, you know what? Actually, John, I think, by the ocean. He did surf. I mean, yeah. Do you remember he walked on that water? He did. Wow. I Bro. see you there. Come on, baby. But up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Where are we at? <laughs> he caught waves. Okay. So, yeah. So, we're on um, uh, 27. 27. True blessedness. Mm -hmm. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you. Ooh, Mary. Mother Mary. And the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, blessed rather rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Wow. Interest everybody listening? Look at that. Smoking biscuits. Why didn't he why didn't he sit there and be like, well, "Yes, Mother Mary, so blessed." Mm -hmm. Of course she is. I mean, God bless her. She did a great job. But he said, rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. That's everybody, John. That's not one special person other than Jesus. Or that doesn't mean she can forgive your sin. She can call, tell you you can get to heaven before anybody else mm. that you don't have to go to purgatory the all these this folklore about her he said you i'm talking to you john i'm talking to me brian i'm talking to everyone listening steph torres jen right Corey, everyone Stuart, all 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 of y'all everyone listening you know pew pew paul everybody wow everybody oh that's right we got to get him back on the team. I talked to him 
multiple nah. times, like three months ago. Me too. Yeah. And then he vanished again. Yeah. Uh, I'll hear from him in like two years from now. <laughs> I love that guy. He's literally like the most secretive. So yeah, so he's talking about all these people. Everybody. Blessed are you if you read, you hear the word and you read it. You keep it and you do it. You follow it. Yeah. Yeah, praise, I love this. Praise to God. Praise God. I love how he's, Jesus is just interacting with her too. You know, it's great. She like step, you know, stands up and yells. And he says, but rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And she's like, and I can just imagine her smiling back being like, amen. And, yeah. happy and you know, kids are jumping on Jesus's lap here. And then he continues on with his journey. And his, her friends are like, dope. You should have said, <laughs> that's funny. I love, I love Jesus. Gosh, look, he talked back to you. This is great. You know, and, uh, look, you know, look at here again. She raised her voice in the crowd. Yeah. She, you know, come on, baby. Yeah. I love how he pointed it out, though. Look, don't just don't honor someone. Honor God's word. Yeah. Amen. You want to hit 29? We we obviously probably won't finish. We're doing a three part series on chapter. Nah, we, we'll, we'll finish it. <laughs> Let's go. We got it. We, we, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> part, part three coming up tomorrow. When crowds were increasing, verse 29, he began to say this generation is an evil generation. It's which keep in mind, evil means unbelieving, right? It, it, it seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Hey, Jonah. Hey. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the son of man be to this generation. Look at how he's talking about Jonah. Just real nice. Jonah. Yeah. He didn't say, oh, grumpy Jonah at the end. You know, Jonah with the bad attitude. You're right. That is just very 100% Jewish. And if you're not, he doesn't, you know, he's grumpy toward any other race. No. <laughs> no. Nope. You know, went the other way at first and then he turned around. No, he didn't. He didn't. Jesus didn't point out or attach Jonah to, to his flaws. Right. He did grumpy. not. Man, that's good. He just said, Jonah, let me use a great example. I love Jonah. Yeah. That's a great point. He didn't attach Jonah. The man Jonah to his flaws. Mm. That's good. Because Jonah was a little on the racist side when it comes to, uh, how racist is the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, he was more mad. He just didn't like them because they were not uh, covenant people, God's people. Yeah. It, you know, he's hate. You know, racism is just hate. And uh, he hated them. <laughs> it's just, you know, uh you know, the Philistines, Nineveh, they, um, the Syrians also, they were not good, but I love it. Yeah, They're... I defended Jonah at dinner once to that one guy that was with Elton. Mm -hmm. He said something really mean about Jonah. Did and he... I got very defensive. Oh? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I go, I'd rather like to say he was a little bit of a grumpy pants at the end, but he got a lot of people saved. He did. And he did God's work. Grumpy, Amen. Grumpy pants is a good way to put it at the end there. Yeah, grumpy pants. Complain about all these non-Jews, okay? You just want to give him a hug. <laughs> like he was grumpy early. Yeah. And then he woke up. And he did it. He did it. They all repented. He mm -hmm. did his work. And then he was a little grumpy at the end. Okay. He loves his people. But you also got to remember, like, he had a lot of beef with these other people. These Gentiles. There's a lot of, there's a lot of history there. Deep-rooted history. Yeah. Lots with these other people, and so it's yes, he shouldn't have been like that. But last time I checked, Jonah was human, amen. And also, aren't we supposed to have mercy? That's what Jesus is doing right here mercy, mm. mercy to Jonah. So, and also, that is a good reminder for us, Brian, to learn be like, don't be like that, yeah, like that. You know, there's a lot of in the Bible, it's probably more of what not to do than what to do, yeah, there's a lot of that. Sorry, I digress. That's good. No. 31, the queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of God. Behold, something greater than Solomon is here. He's talking about queen of Sheba. Who we read about. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. 
For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. He's like, whoa, oh. you you guys, they repented. Why aren't y'all repenting? I am here. I'm I'm the one. Wow. Uh, they, yeah. Look, and then good morning, Solomon. Just, well. This just shows right here that they made it. They got saved. Yeah, that's amazing right there. And again, Jonah is one of those stories. I don't mean to hang up on this, but it's all about the whale and the decision and that. And I get it. I love it. It's the best story in the Bible. But I can make a case that the better story in Jonah is him preaching and all the people getting saved at the end. Oh, for sure. It's not talked about a lot because the big whale story almost kind of overshadows this. It does. Yeah, kind of like it. It's kind of like Daniel. Yeah, like Daniel's in the lion's den. When Nebuchadnezzar gets saved, it's like, wow, that... That should, that should almost be a bigger story than Daniel having faith in the lion's den. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Such a good point, man. I mean, I, in the Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo, the fourth man, Jesus, in the fire. Look, That's it's great. Good one, yeah. He's a savior, but you're absolutely right. Nebuchadnezzar, seven years in the wilderness, eating grass and bugs and whatever. He woke up, and God saved him. Wow. What? And guess what? You know that other people said, tell us... Tell us all about it, Nebuchadnezzar. And they got saved too. Not just one person got saved after that. When they see that a guy like Nebuchadnezzar got saved and he walks with Jesus, you know, is that old? Yeah, that's old. So when he accepts Yahweh, he, I, I guarantee you, it's like Joe Rogan. The minute Joe Rogan accepts Jesus right now with his following of people, oh, many people are going to be like, oh, I've been on the fence too. Now I do. Now I'm going to believe in Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Exactly. Look at Paul the Apostle, right? How many people he went around after he got born again? Same thing with Jordan Peterson, right? So many people, influencers, like like uh, like who who are are going to get lives changed, and people are going who follow those people mm -hmm. are going to be like, wow, wow. There's something about this. I need to. I need to know. Amen. Uh, 33, no one after lighting a lamp puts it in a cellar or under a basket. I'm going to let it shine, but on a stand so that those who hear may enter the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. Take heed. Listen, everyone. I take heed. That's Old Testament King James. Listen up. Like literally what you look at can light your body right here. When your eye is healthy. Something. What's that? Can I say something? Yeah. I, not plural. I. Listen, you hear that? I. <laughs> I, not plural. Look at this, not plural. How many eyes do you need, Brian? You need one. You need one for sure. One eye. When your eye is healthy. So if my daughter ends up losing her other eye, guess what? She's got a strong eye. And as long as that light is in her eye, non-plural, it's biblical right here, that's what Jesus is talking about, not eyes. There is not plural attached to this. And by the way, yeah, she's not, praise the Lord, going to lose it. But also, if you have no eyes and you're listening, and you know, you're like Stevie, Stevie Wonder, by the way, which Stevie Wonder can see. <laughs> uh... That's a whole nother podcast. Then um, look, your your thoughts, your vision, your what you see, right? But anyway, uh, yeah, your eye. Your eye is the lamp of the whole body. Well, yeah, and, and also there is no such thing as a person with no eyes because when they get to heaven, they will have eyes. Amen. Samson has eyes. Samson has – hashtag Samson has eyes. That should be a shirt. Yeah, <laughs> Hashtag Samson can see. That's great. So your whole body is full of light, but when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Mm. Therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. Right? Mm. Wow. Um, therefore, be careful lest the light in you be darkness. 36, if then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright or fully bright. Mm. And as when a light, as when a lamp with its rays gives you light, it's all about what you look at. It's all about what you're, what you're studying, what you're focusing on. So mm. it's such a, such an important point. Don't be influenced by the world. Don't be influenced by bad music. Yeah. Don't be influenced by, you know, the enemy. 
and in people's in human opinion, by the way, just because a human says, "Oh, this is okay now in life. This is acceptable." Doesn't mean it. All agreed. No, 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 no. What's acceptable, what is right, what is truth, is the word of God. Amen. Genesis one one, Revelations twenty two twenty one. Anything outside of these books, Jesus says, is blasphemy. Come on now. Yeah, I mean, look, it, the word of God is the truth. You know, um, hold on to it. It'll shine the light in your life. Thirty seven. While Jesus was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to to dine with him. So he went in and reclined at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you see Pharisee, cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You fools, he says this, you fools, did not he who made the, the Pharisees like, look, Wash your body, <laughs> the Lord. Where, and again, we've talked about this in Mark. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, when Jesus wrote the Old Testament, nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to wash your hands before dinner. No, it's a tradition. Tradition. It's a human tradition. So just all for the, the listeners out there, I want to make that clear. These people are on human tradition. Oh, you have to do this. Jesus is like, I don't want to wash my hands. I'm good. I'm, I am God. I yeah. am the bush. I am the dove. I know. I am the cloud. I don't need to wash my hands. Exactly. I don't want to wash my hands. I am washed. I am I am washed in the blood of God. Yeah, so when your mom says, kids, go wash up for dinner, sometimes you should... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. Go wash up. Whatever she says. But, you, but I think there's a big root here where Jesus is washed. Jesus. Yes. And when and when his blood falls from the cross upon everyone in Abraham's bosom, upon the people living at that time, upon us in 2024 in the middle time here, when his blood falls upon David and Brian Knight and Samson and Ruth and Stephanie and Torres um, and Nebuchadnezzar, that is that is washed. Yes. Well said, John. Look, it says in Romans chapter 3, chapter 5, all the, the, the salvation has come, basically his blood has come upon all and unto all that receive. You have to receive it. It's Tell there. Them. It's there for you. Tell them. It's, it's here for everyone. It's ready. Now, Will Hogginson, you hear me? Ro go back and read Romans 3. Salvation has come upon all. The righteousness of God has come upon all and unto all. That's a big statement. So go I out there. And Will's on Brett, Pastor Brett's side now, though. The, the answer is yes. For, it's both. God chooses people, but he chooses everybody. But he chooses pe different people for different things. Yeah. He does choose different people for different things. Verse 40. Jesus says to the Pharisees, right here it is. You fools, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? <coughs> but, Excuse me. No, you're all good. But give him alms. But give as alms those things that are within. And behold, everything is clean for you. There it is. I didn't even read ahead. Yeah. Kind of. That was kind of my point, not to like... Well, look at, yeah, no, you're good. Look at Jesus right here in the midst of them eating dinner. He says, but woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. Wow. Mm. Literally. Um, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues. And greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves. And people walk over them without knowing. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying these things, you insult us also. And he said, Woe to you, lawyers, also. I love that, lawyers. Uh, what does it say? Uh, it have the wrong heart. It's not about insulting them, the humans. It's about insulting God. Yeah, well, it's just, I mean, it's not even, uh, he's like, look, if you don't like the truth, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to hear the truth? This is like, 
Don't drink the poison. I'm telling you what poison is. Oh, and Jesus is not going to just lay a sword down and bend to human opinion. Right. You know, just because he doesn't want to hurt people's feelings. Exactly. No, he's going to tell them the truth. He's going to tell them the truth, man. This is what it is. This is. No, and he's going to say in the beginning, he made them male and female only. Exactly. I'm saying there's only two genders, male, female. And he says a man should leave his family and cleave to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. It didn't say Steve and John will leave their families and become one. It didn't say Mary and Martha will leave their families and become one. This is man and wife. I'm, no, I'm just saying. No, you better. That's one point out of many. Absolutely. 40, yeah. 46. Yeah. That's just the culture of the day. Woe to you lawyers also, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witness, and you consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they killed them, talking about the prophets, and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some whom they will kill and persecute, so that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. From the blood of Abel mm. to the blood of Zechariah. Oh, wow. Hey, Abel. Hey, Zechariah. Who perished between the altar and sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Well, basically, he's just laying it down. He's like, you guys are still sinning. You still are the same. You're, the, you're of the same heart as those who killed the prophets. Yeah, and it seems like Jesus is like, you know, it reminds me of... Uh, it reminds me of Second Kings twenty two eight. You know, like before they when they weren't reading the Bible, you know, they lost the Bible and the rubble of, of the temple. That's it, man. Exactly, doing their own thing. Wrong human opinion, etc. And then Hilkiah found the Bible, ran it over to King Josiah. Oh my gosh, look what we found! They dusted off the the debris and started yeah. to strip their clothes, hit the hit the floor, had a you know two month church service, and got back on track because of words God's word. And it seems like that's what they're missing here and what God's saying. It's like, hey, you've had the word. You've had the prophets. Why are you creating human things that are not of God? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you're, 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 you're doing things out of your own lusts, your own passions, not God's ways. Mm. Remember he said, remember even earlier, remember the, the lady who stood up and said with a loud voice, blessed is Mary, the mother of whom you you sucked at birth and the womb that you came out of. And Jesus is like, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean blessed are the people who hear God's word? She did the same thing. She was doing the same thing. She was trying to say blessed, you know, as a person. Yeah. God, right. But Jesus turned it around. He said, no, 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 no. Go back to the word. All right. The word, the word, which, by the way, Mary read and loved. Yeah, she knew it. Do. and so, uh, you know so yeah we only have like one minute here yeah. we gotta and get on weightlifting talk but yeah let's finish this up um we're almost done here we 52 Co yeah we have a couple more just three woe to oh. you lawyers for you have taken away the key of knowledge you did not enter yourselves you and you hindered those who were entering mm. And he went away from there. The scribes and Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak about many things, lying in wait for him to catch him in something he might say. Yeah, God, Look, he um, was they were offended by him. Yeah, God, He just told them. He said, what's up, baby? What's the worldly softies? Well, what? he went in and told them what's up and the truth right in their face, and they didn't like it. Yeah, he dropped some, dropped some knowledge bombs, baby. Some bar slams and... Said, this is what it is. Let's go. Let's go. Well, you want to pray it out? Yes. Amazing study. Uh, dear Jesus, thank you so much for chapter 11. Thank you for writing this book directly for Brian and myself and for Stuart Young and Torres mm -hmm. and Stephanie 
and everybody else listening. Thank you for the for your love note to us on what to do, what not to do, how to live life, how to be saved. Amen. Get to heaven, how to treat others, how to walk the narrow path, how to keep our swords sharp, how to be parents, how to be followers of Christ. Everything. You wrote this Bible. You breathed this, this Bible through man for us. And we are so grateful. We are, be, we are so beyond blessed. Amen. Yes. Your word every day. From Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. God, you breathed this word through man. And we thank Luke. Please tell him up in heaven. Thank you for us. Yep. For writing this and all he did. Thank all of the people, uh, if you can, Lord, and all the prophets for the work they did as you worked through them, just like you worked through a doctor or a nurse or a pastor. Amen. Um, we just love you so much. We, toward the end of this paragraph, Jesus, we, we say no to the world. We say no to human opinion. And we say yes to your word because we not we will read your word and then we will do your word. Give us strength for that to stay away. Uh, we praise we, we celebrate Jonah as, as you did this morning, not looking at Jonah's flaws, but just all the great things he did mm -hmm. through Jonah. Uh, we just love Jonah so much. We can't wait to give even, even me a white Gentile from Oregon. I'm going to give him a big hug and. We're going to be all good. And he's going to, he's going to love me. I know it. Because his heart changed once he got to heaven. Um, let's see here. Yes. Keep our sword sharp away from the unclean spirits from above here. As we have the armor of God. Come on now. The armor of God around us. There we go. And inside of us. You, Christ, inside of us. So we say, flee, devil. Get back in the pigs. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. And we go right to scripture when we say flee, when we're being attacked, just like you did in the woods, Jesus, around those animals. And Mark, by the way, that wasn't in Matthew. I love how you put that in there, Jesus. A little nugget for us to see how animals were all around you, as you said to the devil, flee. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful sight that was, Jesus. Thank you for throwing that detail in in, Ma in Matthew as well, or in Mark. I could go on. Um, your prayer, Jesus above, that we read yesterday. Father, how hallowed be my name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is in debt to us and lead us not into temptation. Beautiful prayer. Jesus, I'm going to study this this weekend and know it by heart on Monday. That's my homework assignment that I told Brian. And uh, thank you for teaching us every single morning. Thank you for bringing us together. Give us strength for a great weekend Yeah. of activities and lifting and love and family. We look up to you and we dance for you every day like King David did. Right when he got crowned, coming through the city of Israel. Of, of I'm sorry, of Jerusalem. Right, Brian? Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah. King David was dancing for the Lord, for you, Lord, with all his might. And we mm -hmm. do that every single day, even through storms. We will dance like David. Oh, yeah. And we will not stop. In Jesus' name, in your name, Jesus, the great I am, the burning bush, the dove, and the lamb, the holy trinity, three equals one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great prayer.